Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sevda, and today I will give you a presentation on the MetLife building, which we have been working on it for since 11 weeks. So, at the very beginning of the project, uh, our task was to analyze the local area and the building. So, what I've done in the week one is just had a look to the pictures, uh, just uh, use the Google map or just Google as a search engine, and to get the initial thoughts about the building. So, it is one of the most hatred buildings in the New York. The reason is that if the uh, main reason is it blocks the Park Avenue, and another reason that people in the New York think that, like it's quite uh, old building and it's not uh, visually good. So, and our task is to redesign a new facade to the existing building. Uh, during the 11 week, I was working in the physical modeling group, and my task was to uh, make the physical modeling. In the first weeks, I was in a group with Kadra and Anna. So, what we made basically the, the, for the week two, I just made a small model of the metwork building. And as you can see from the picture, I didn't quite uh, understand the base part at the uh, very beginning, so I did a bit wrong. But for the week three, when we're uh, moving towards, we have been told like, to make it in a scale, in a proper scale. So as a scale, I just want to 1,000 scale. And this was my actual building. How does it look like? I have just the texture of it. It's just uh, printed off from the website. And uh, these uh, parts are the shiny mirror card. I just, uh, for the sake of keeping it simple, I just use the shiny card to here. And for the following week, so we're moving on. We just uh, been asked after schools to understand the relationship of the nearby buildings to the MetLife building so we can really understand uh, how, uh, to what extent can we design the facade, like what shape. So I just again did a proper uh, building in a, again, scale in the one to one thousand and unfortunately I couldn't scale the Google Maps properly so I decided to make my own to one to one thousand scale or the uh, like inclinations are taken from the actual map on the Google Maps and this is their surrounding area. Uh, one of the most important structure, structures in that area is Grand Central Terminal but for keeping it the, not distracting the building I also uh, made it from a model like a plain simple card. So this structure is important because uh, the train light mainly goes under the MetLife building and during the facade construction we also need to uh, acknowledge this information in order not to damage the existing uh, structures. And another problem or another thing we need to consider is all about uh, people traffic across the building. So it was my next task to do for the week for the next week. So what I've done is I found the uh, New York Underground map on the website, and uh, what I uh, thought is <coughs> like we had a uh, like I did uh, this task as you can see the, here is the Grand Central Terminal on the map, and two minutes. You still have two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like. Uh, this is the <coughs> three lines. The sh for the second shuttle line is just as the Times Square and the Grand Central Terminal, so it just operates uh, like until the midnight, so 12 hours. But the rest of the lines operates 24 hours, so it basically means the uh, <coughs> like uh, there's a how we can calculate the people intensity in the area. And then my next step was to create the paper model, which I just made it something where initial, which just represents the lines of the building which is in here. So uh, this is the Grand Central Terminal lines, three lines. And what I've moved on, I uh, wanted to show something like much more dynamic way, like uh, to actually represent some data. What I found, this is <coughs> to like uh, subway line, lines, and this part is, can be expanded to show the data during the day and I can like uh, to shrink it to show the data during the night in order to uh, mention that there's uh, less people in the night rather than the day and it's quite foldable. <coughs> Our next task was a bit paper uh, folding techniques and to understand how can we create the facade of the building from the paper so all I uh, found is like uh, these are all I've made. This can be related to the height of the building. Each word can be uh, right, represented in the surrounding buildings. And these are different shapes also. These parts can be represented, the data can be represented and the intensity of the, like this 
uh, foldings, like where is there is a lot of uh, amount, I can make it more into it, and where is a lease, I can put it like this form. And <coughs> then afterwards, uh, what uh, my task was to become is the like to in get the information with Amy. We were working that group. And uh, what uh, we had, like I was doing research on the people flow, people amount, people traffic in the MetLife building, like in the Grand Central Terminal. And she was doing the rainfall data in the New York. And in here, I just uh, draw the pie chart from the people. The first pie chart just includes <coughs> the people using the Grand Central Terminal, including the weekend data. And the next is excluding the weekend data. And on this small map, I just uh, wanted to show the people using the Grand Central Terminal exits. It's the time of the days, and the uh, <coughs> amount of the people are represented in terms of the circles, and the uh, different uh, exits are represented with different colors. So as you can see from these maps, the most the peak hours is between the 2 p.m. and the 6 p.m. And <coughs> also, for the, in the following weeks, what uh, we have done is aim, like we thought, how can we integrate uh, to both of other because it's one is the rainfall and one is the people for a chat. So what we uh, came with very initial idea was to make the folds like per month to represent the data where is the least uh, amount of the. Okay. Uh, the time uh, of the the amount of the people and uh, the amount of the rainfall in the like peaks and drops. So this was a very initial idea. And what we wanted to do next is to, uh, rather than putting in a straight way, we wanted to put in a diagonal way, and it was very initial attempts of how we need to do it, like uh, to represent, the, to determine the uh, most people and the less people, and to get it uh, in terms of uh, another months. In here, all we wanted to put, like we wanted to uh, join to paper data and to see how we can, like, whenever they uh, collide, one is increasing and one is decreasing, one can come out from the paper by cutting this. But unfortunately, as you can see in this paper, uh, this part is uh, representing the drain and this part is a people flow chart. There's a lot of faults, so it will be not quite uh, visual beautiful when we make a lot of cuts on it, and it will be quite hard when we will come to real life to construct. And what we came up with, Rather than just to represent uh, the same date in the two same ways, it just uh, represents the amount of the rainfall like a uh, folding way and the people for chart in the, uh, the holes in the circles with the uh, various diameters to show, to show the amount of the people. And as you can see, where is the most people, uh, where is the more people, the circle is bigger, and where is the less people, the circle gets smaller. And <coughs> during that stage, as I, we finally came towards the end of our final episode, I wanted to just um, get a research the available material sources and available ge geographical data that the New York has so we could easily obtain the necessary ma materials from the New York. And this is what I came up. Like, uh, if I didn't really have any depth understanding of it, but it's a part of my research, so I wanted to show it to you as well. And what I initially came up uh, as a window design, because this was my uh, part of the window design as it was diagonal foldings, I uh, wanted to make something uh, quite a uh, nice shape, like a modern shape, and I put in a circle. And this model is 1 to 50 scale, uh, as the <coughs> height of the each floors were 5 meters in actual building, and the average height were 4.25 meters, I decided to make it average 5 meters in order to get uh, uh, like sufficient uh, sunlight, and uh, I also the diameter of the circle will also be varied based on the data we have for the uh, underground and the passenger statistics. And what I finally came out about the window of the building. As you know, the New York is quite busy and during the New York there's not so much green places available and to, at the now the trending architectural style is to make the buildings much more environmentally friendly and more uh, like green. I wanted to attach a uh, grass across the, the whole diameter of the circle in the window 
and this part is going to be just, just a plain uh, window to represent it and this is the actual model how, do you, uh, how I wanted to do it and about the final piece of the facade this is how it will be look like as a part of it as you can see in here there's a different diameter for the circles and in this one I have uh, three different uh, like <coughs> colors the actual colors are the White cards are representing the metal. We wanted to make it uh, to be from glass and metal. And the blues are representing the glass. And as it is diagonally, we don't even have a, a problem with the sufficient light, sunlight, because it's diagonal. So it, as the fours are vertical, each four will get a sufficient amount of the light. And uh, <coughs> so I want the actual material, what I really thought in the real life what we can uh, make is uh, I thought and I came up with an idea to make it glass fiber reinforced concrete and the reason why I, why I chose it it's quite, as it's very old building like it's been built in 1960 and we need to consider the loading capacity of the building as well, so the facade could be built from that material particular because it has a high strength as it's the uh, also has a cement inside of it, and I, because of the polymers, it's quite elastic, so you can easily give any shape you want, so we can fold the actual material very easily, and it's very uh, resistant, and it's very durable to fire as well. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>